My name is Samuel Leach, a Forex trader, Forbes contributor and TED speaker. I'm about to put my reputation and over £150,000 on the line to prove that anyone can become a profitable trader if they have the right mentor and mindset. Trading has given me the opportunity to travel across the world and now I'd like to give others the opportunity to better themselves. It's not going to be easy and over the next coming weeks, 18 ordinary people with no trading experience will undertake one of the biggest challenges of their lives as they compete to become a consistently profitable trader. So we'll see you all live now. This is where it all gets a bit serious. There's a lot of money now traded in the room and people are panicking to try to get into positions and things like that. I'm looking to short US dollar card. Hopefully pound dollar comes in. We all get in and then Theresa May opens her mouth and sends a pound through the floor. I'm not very, not very clear on this 15 minute So, do you yeah. know what they did with them, I think this is pretty much what I expected, just the brutality of it. You said you can't do it. The trade went well. Now I'm trying to try and hold it or sell it in the room. 2%, Everyone thinks trading is easy and are sucked into these get rich quick schemes, but when the pressure is on, will they be able to succeed? I'm a bit worried, Sam. So you're going to move to 75,000. Previously on The Real Forex Trader, Trading to Success. I think I'm obviously going to have to fail you just because of the fact that I haven't seen any research put in. Um, I have a good understanding of forex markets, yet you can't name three technical indicators. You don't know the current, you don't know the Bank of England's interest rate, you don't know who Mark Carney is, you don't know what CPI stands for, you don't know what economic data is released at first Friday every month. So why should we take a risk on you? I want as much out of this as like what you do kind of thing. This is, because this would change, could change my life. What I care about is how individuals are working within a team who's making the decisions and who's leading the group. So these guys are about to participate in three truths and one lie. What we want to see from this is just how much these guys are willing to reveal and so we can find out a little bit more about their character. Right, so you believe slave labour shouldn't be abolished? Well, no, I said it shouldn't be condemned and the reason behind that would be... Challenge three, ethics. What would you do? We're about to push these guys' ethics just a little bit further. Now there's no right and there's no wrong answer. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He wasn't put in that situation. You're putting him in. This question more on this. With the day coming to an end, there's just one thing left to do. So, uh, obviously, Sam's always given the task to decide who's leaving. Um, we've come to the decision that, uh, unfortunately, Tom, okay, we've come to you. Um, what we'd like to do is we'll hang around afterwards if you want to speak to. Ask us why, okay, um, but yeah, sorry to say, we came to the decision of you. And um, I think we'd all like to wish you the best um, yeah. future as well, and okay. keep going. Um, so yeah, everyone if you can have a round of applause, please. Okay, so that is um, day one over with, as gruesome as it has been. I didn't expect to be first, I'll be per I will be honest, I was nervous. I didn't expect to be first. But obviously, they have their reasons, so you have to respect them. I'm sorry, I appreciate it. It's is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. Just, it's just one of those things, isn't it? Have to take it on the chin and just move on, really. Not ideal. I want to work for the company. That, is, that has been my goal from the day, first day I found the company. So if I can work in the company in any way, shape or form, I will do my best to do that. Day one, absolutely brutal. Um, Tom's now gone. On to the next one. 22 seconds away from the opening bell this Wednesday. Good morning to you worldwide. Let's Take a look at these video game makers plunging here on the open. As the trading day began, the team received an unexpected phone call. Uh, Guinea, um, she seems a bit out of her depth at the moment. Um, she sort of misunderstood. I think as the next few days go on, I think they'll have to sort of prove what they can bring uh, to Samuel Crow Trading, come out of their shell a bit more. Otherwise, um, I can't see them lasting much longer in the process. Um, it's, I mean, everything is really nice. Everybody's very um, 
uh, they all are really good but it's just me uh, you know and I just feel like I don't have potential so I just feel like I should drop off you know I'd recommend at least giving it you know to the end of the week but obviously ultimately it's up to you it's your call okay yeah thank you thank you that makes thank sense you. okay guinea all you. the all the best thank you bye we'll see if she comes in if she's late i'm sure sam won't be happy but yeah we'll, we'll find out the decision was left with guinea who unfortunately decided that the challenge was not for her if the other candidates think that this means they'll be safe from elimination today they are wrong um more importantly i've Got a really good company that's done background checks into everyone. When they've done these background checks, they're checking absolutely everything. I just really thought some of those individuals um, would have let me know what they were, especially yesterday going through truths and you know doing the truths and lies and kind of work out a little bit more about individuals. So I've like found out <clears throat> a lot more than necessarily we would want to. So I'm basically just going to give those individuals the benefit of the doubt to basically just stand up here make their way outside if they feel that they have something that they need to admit. Obviously that's not the only ones. I know who the people are in this room that have got things on social media. Um, court warnings, uh, police warnings, across your lives. Is there anyone else? Making a question for myself. You feel guilty, yeah? I was young. I just thought I'd rather step outside and uh, if something has come. I'd rather step outside and be told, yeah, there's actually nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Then they want to talk to you. Well, I've been honest about everything else, so you know, being honest about everything else. Your confession is just not going to be. It's going to be any different. As he said though, honestly, he's like the best policy because yeah. the company, you've got to have trust. It's all mad. Oh, okay. One comment on social media, like when you were 14, something they found it and you forgot yeah, about it. Yeah, but they just like chop us all though, they're like, that's it, you're done. Well then, you know, then that's so it. Well, you're your soulmate. Well, the only thing, well, obviously, the portfolio where I'm in my past isn't the most colourful of things. But I haven't got like a record or a police record or anything like that. I don't really know, that's what's, that's, I'm just here basically because I'm paranoid. I've got quite a few friends on social media and some of them do tend to put up some pretty crappy sort of things and the only parts I can imagine that I haven't revealed only for the reason I was never asked. I got done for speeding but I got uh, I did like a, a speed awareness course or something like that. It makes you question yourself you're thinking well obviously everyone's got a past like well, uh, in my younger days I've done things. You couldn't believe like how many people they found out things on. Some of it sounds a lot worse than it is. Hindsight, those sorts of things, you think, yeah. And the only things that I can think that may have come up, but I'd be very surprised, we've not been convicted of anything. Well, I've passed every security check before, I've never had a, never had a problem. It's basically came out of the room because so many people were leaving and he was like, I think a bit of paranoia setting. I mean, I've got a few things that might have flagged up. Uh, I did get, pulled over in Australia for speeding. Pretty sure I did tell them in my interview, um, but obviously trading to deal with money and risk management, etc. Um, and when I didn't get into the Royal Marines at uh, 17, 18. Um, maybe social media, maybe comments. I mean, I do tweet a lot. I uh, got a little bit depressed and I got into gambling. Uh, so I lost quite a hefty sum of money. Um, that's the only thing that comes to the top of my head. Um, I mean, I did get a driving fine. Uh, I don't know exact numbers, but around the 10 grand mark. Yeah, quite a lot. It's madness. Yeah, it's madness. It's me I just, you know, anything that I could have said that could have been misconstrued you know, on social media, anything like that. Yeah. You know, you just don't know how things are, are taken. I have it came across, you know, haven't killed anybody, I haven't done anything mad. So, all done. Okay, so just based on what's happened this morning, it's just a nice big wind up for myself. So, you're all okay? It's just a final oh, test. Oh, it's a final oh, test of your ethics. Yeah. Obviously, we can see um, you know, what individuals have done, not done. We've all been there at some point in life where something has gone a little bit wrong. That's not funny. <laughs>
Um, okay, so that phase is over. Um, we're on to the next stress stage now, which is basically academic. So how much you're capable of achieving on your own um, in academics before we then go on and teach you. That was not cool. <laughs> Yeah, so but emotions are all over the place this morning and I think everybody was in the same boat there. Everybody was questioning their whole lives. When my past has always sprung up, it always does make me nervous because up till probably I moved over here, everyone judged me by my past and coming over here and people not doing that, it's just been kind of hard to get the grips with. People are really scared though. Like, they're just, they read that people really, really want this like badly, like. Any time my past has sprung up, it's just I, I've, I think I have fear that it's going to ruin my chances of being successful. And, and I've been honest up to now, so I wasn't going to hide anything. That was fantastic planning on, on Sammy Unko's part. For Sam to come in and say, oh, it was only a wind up, I felt like getting up and strangling, <laughs> to be quite honest. So I did a, um, but relief really that bit's over, to be honest. So um, yeah, so hopefully the rest of the day goes a bit better. Well, it was an interesting morning. That's what I meant. I, was like, I'm, I'm, I did see Atish laughing through the window, and I just thought that I'm having a joke. I didn't think, oh, I didn't put, I didn't put cotton on. Them. So basically, what I want you to do in your teams is this morning um, until about twelve o'clock, you are going to be working on the stock report. It's coming up ten o'clock, so you've got roughly two hours to sort out how you're going to do it. But um, you've got two hours to work on an individual stock, and then decide as a team which one that you would then like to put forward as the best stock report and then go through why and the reasons behind it. Some of you guys may have no clue about stocks whatsoever. That's where research teamwork comes into play and see how much self-learning you guys have achieved just to see where individuals are at. And then in the afternoon, you're gonna be doing the flip side, you're gonna be doing an FX report. And I'd like you each to choose a major currency and to write about. And then again, come together as a team to choose which one is the best one. And hopefully, find out who's weak, who's strong at um, doing academic um, kind of research on, the, on their own on what stock report and FX report should look like. And then at the end of the day, we'll be then voting on who stays, who goes, and we'll be losing another person today. Everyone understand? Yeah. Crack on. We also like think outside the box and introduce like okay, for a potential yeah. session that all looks good on, on our recently yeah. legalised things. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good starter. Well, medical like, marijuana. Exactly. Yeah. That's one key one. We don't want to come up all with the same yeah, yeah. one. We like use the first hour and we, and we pick one stock each. Yeah. And then at the end, like if we have got two yeah. the same, it's obvious that that's a. And then we both. Yeah, you can get the ratio, but what does it mean? It's yeah, I want to know. I want to know if it's under profit too early. Profit too early. We only have one month to turn the candidates into profitable traders, and everyone moves quickly at Samuel Co Trading. So we'll be looking for those who are able to keep up with our fast pace. From that from that day, they seem to be continually getting more contracts. What I've done, I've picked uh, IGG, which is the IG Group. Um, it's the largest online trading business, and revenues are looking quite good. It's growing exponentially. Banks obviously follow each other. Yeah. The coming months of Brexit, and if there is a crash, that's something that people are going to be potentially looking at. What we're looking for in their stock presentations is the process they use to identify a good stock, both fundamentally and technically. I'm just kind of like, you know what this is? Why, would this, why would this be the one to go for? Yeah. Will they rise to the challenge? Will they get behind their team, even if their idea wasn't the one chosen? They've never um, fallen short, they've always been in their own. When you're down, um, so I mean, I'm confident in it fundamentally. Will they be open-minded to any criticism we may have, or will their pride get in the way? Okay guys, sometimes financial jargon can really throw you off the markets, but don't worry, we're going to make sure that you understand every single terminology along the journey, unlike these guys. Time for the presentation. Do you agree with their stock picks? So, we, me, Elia and Jordan that will be going over reports. Jordan does all of the FX um, and stock reports. We actually ended up choosing um, Netflix from Mark. So to begin with, obviously Netflix, who are they? Um, I'm sure we all use Netflix here. I'm more going to deal with the technical side of things and where to buy and why we would buy. Um, fundamental side of things, I'm going to leave that with Dominic to begin with. 
Yeah, so yeah, just firstly, who is Netflix? Uh, Netflix is a streaming service that was came around in 1997. The five year average revenue growth is about 30% at 29.27% growth. And the um, PE ratio of the 31st of December, just uh, at the end of last year, was 134.10. So PE ratio, price over earnings, is simply the share price divided by the earnings per share. Don't have to worry about that too much. All we need to know is it's a tool investors use to value a company. Investors look at companies' price over earnings and compare them against the industry average. The higher the PE ratio, the more overvalued the company is. This isn't necessarily a bad thing if a company is overvalued. It may be justifiable why that company has that higher value. And do you know kind of like what the sector standard is for a PE ratio stock similar to now Netflix, anything like that? No, we don't. Yeah. Yeah. It's about anywhere between 25 and 30. Okay. Is that a good PE ratio? Is that well, that oh, PE... No, Dominic, sorry. Uh, yeah, the PE ratio, it could be uh, valued as over, um, overvalued stock because it is quite high. Is it, is, it, is it a team effort that's looked into uh, yeah, these all, fundamentals or is it... We all, we all yeah. like one subject and then brought it all to the table. Do, you, do any of you know kind of what the um, net worth, net value is of Netflix at the moment? I have a feeling the asset sheet isn't great because they're in a ton of debt at the moment, uh, 200% of their actual... So do you not think that was worth... Is that on the report? Or well, um, that came that came to light um, <laughs> close to... Well, once we'd actually completed so the report. Companies borrow in the same way you and I would borrow. The issue is where you continue to borrow or a company continues to borrow and things spiral out of control. This is particularly bad for shareholders because most of the time when a company folds or goes into administration, the shareholders are left with nothing. Because we're inexperienced actually within the stock market, yeah. so uh, Alex took the, the majority of the lead on it, um, but it was a group decision, so we all have to take that, uh, you know. So when it, when it came to pointing out the debt, who, who pointed out the debt? Alex. 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 So that, as a signal, obviously it's hindsight, hindsight's hindsight, but that's completely taken out the high of the previous candle there. So from you two, obviously you haven't spoken much, um, so would you like to go first and say what are the key points that are um, dangerous that we should be cautious of of investing in this stock? Well, the one thing that should be cautious of is what Alex mentioned uh, before we even came to the boardroom was the 200 million uh, uh, US dollar debt, which is obviously something to look out for. 200%. 200%, sorry. Um, you and obviously weigh that up if we had more time we'll go away from here and like could look at some charts in terms of the comparison between yeah. the debt and obviously the revenue that it, it looks to be bringing in to put it together well um assume that some, at times that they kind of contradicted themselves or yeah. did, didn't um didn't read up on it as much as they should have done is presented in this one of which couple uh, of people myself yeah. uh, ben and luke okay and the stuff we've been looking at is electronic arts. Electronic arts is a gaming company producing popular franchises like The Sims and Command and Conquer. EA Sports is arguably the company's strongest division. So we're looking at EA because last week they released their Q3 earnings and it saw them take a 13.3% drop. When was the earnings report released? It was released last week. Last week? Yeah, came out. Sure. Wednesday last week. Just there. Yeah. Just there. Do we know what the debt's like? Is the debt is the debt worrying? Don't worry. Debt. They got yeah, couldn't, couldn't find anything, anything on it. Two hundred something million and then it's the most Who drew these takers? Me. We're targeting um, the top of that rule. Um, on on both of them. So what's the what the short idea is that if it doesn't go to plan then? Um, no, it's just that we're waiting to see what happens at that area. So am I buying with 50k tomorrow, or am I not buying with 50k tomorrow? Oh, if it stays where it is, then I will buy with 50k tomorrow. When would you then? Um, I'd wait to come back down and retest. That level. What what is are you waiting for? Then for it to test. Come back down and retest. Yeah, test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you waiting for then? For it to test. You're waiting for it to test that level. Hasn't it basically done that though? No. Can you send the final group in? Yeah, yeah, great. Thanks, guys. Cheers. 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 I've got my stock report here. Okay, cool. so your Just some notes and that, but yeah, you want Our stock pick was into it, which we all agreed on. 
So was everyone in agreement it, with it? Uh, yeah, 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 it was a throw between that one and the one I selected, which was uh, the IGG group. We saw the confidence um, he had a bit, and he seems to know probably had one of us more about stocks. Oh, uh, yeah, you're pinning it all on me. No, 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 it seemed very much that we were in a, a losing debate with him about whether or not we were going to change our stock or stick with it. So do you have a background in stocks or anything like that? Um, I, I do invest, uh, but not, nothing professionally. Just, uh, yeah, just uh, my granddad taught me a fair bit. Well, referring to myself as an investor, I believe that when a company dominates a market, um, some investors are willing to pay a premium for that. Because you feel very quiet, so, uh, for example, do you know what the dividends are? I don't know. Um, so, do you yeah. know what the dividends are? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Uh, the. I believe it was around 4%. Yeah, it was, it was a, a fairly high, I believe, out of the ones that we were looking at. There are two main ways an investor can make money from investing in a company. The first is via capital growth. So they buy a share at a set price and then they sell that share at a later date at a higher price. The other form is via dividends. Dividends are a form of income for the shareholders and they're usually paid out twice a year by a company. I can't remember exactly, so I'm not going to stand here and lie, but I can't remember. Yeah, so they're expected to hit 0.86%, I believe, this year. Uh, if I'm it's going off the top of my head, but from what I recall seeing, um, you're holding it more for the increase in price as opposed to... Yeah, yeah, I'm just seeing how much you yeah. guys know about. So cool, cool. It's starting to become clear who's been putting the most effort in and who's been taking a back seat. Who do you think will be leaving today? Target for the trade will be 2.45, which is 10% move over the current price, giving us a risk reward just shy of 2 to 1. So you're saying, so you're, you want to buy now yeah. ahead of the earnings release? So you put a trade on today, that's what you're saying? Uh, based on the current technical level, you're going to buy I prefer like to pull back here and buy off the support, but we'll go with what we've got today. One of the uh, listed company's obligations is to report their earnings. Normally, a company will report their earnings outside of market hours. It gives time for investors to, to digest what the company is reporting. Without information of what that company is going to release in its earnings report, you're essentially flipping a coin. You're saying, I like the look of this company. I think it's going to release good earnings. Therefore, I'm going to place a trade. The fact that the company is at all times highs, I think adds to that risk. Therefore, it's not something we'd recommend and something we see as more gambling. Of course it would be safer to let it pull back to a, let's say, a support zone um, and then look for the buy, because obviously you'd reduce your risk, but... What about if it doesn't pull back? Exactly. It just goes yeah, well that's so it. What's your decision? I just well, yeah, it. our decision is to buy in today. Right, okay. um, and at, at so, when the earnings come out, what are you doing? What is your game plan for this trade? So we'll be entering in anticipation of the earnings being positive. Um, right. And personally, uh, I would, if the earnings were positive, I would look to uh, enhance my position and actually increase it. Yeah, so I believe they've missed um, one year going back in. You said they've never missed. Um, they are. Uh, the most uh, recent one they missed. Was it the most recent? It's the most recent one they had 10 years. It's on, it's on the chart there. Yeah. Yeah. Either. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Do you, think invest, sorry, do you think investors are going to be nervous that they missed their last earnings and they might happen again? So when you keep saying personally, have you guys discussed this or is this just something that you none of you have discussed what will happen with the game plan? So you're entering today, you're saying that you're expecting it to move up due to good earnings. So obviously your trade idea is around the earnings, right? So what happens on the day of the earnings? What are you doing with the stock? Are you closing it? Are you holding it? Are you waiting for the results? We will be holding it. <laughs> have you seen what's happened previously though? Once they've received, so whether the earnings have been good or bad, have you seen what happens to price? Drop, so if, if the earnings are poor? No, bad, no but so just I in did. general. So whether they're good or bad, have you seen what's happened in the past with this stock? around earnings? Because just looking generally at it, every single earnings update, pretty much seven out of 10 of them price falls every single time the earnings comes out, whether it's good or bad. The problem is, is loss, when, yeah. when you're looking at the way you're looking at it, obviously the expectations are high. They don't quite reach those expectations or, you know, the expectations come out and there's something that slightly investors don't like. There's a lot of pressure on the stock, sure. but that's where you see either big swings. So yeah. having like a 5% stop loss on a stock before earnings is quite, quite tight. So what did each individual do on this task? I contributed to the annual uh, earnings 
and also the quarterly earnings, uh, and then worked out the percentage increases over each period. Um, the number is market <coughs> cap. Yeah. Um, is, is, the, is the market cap? Somewhere around 85, but not 100% sure. I think it's 58. 58. 58. Yeah. About 54. 50. Is that, that's what you did though, didn't you? So why didn't you remember yeah. that? <coughs> okay. Cool. Cheers, guys. Okay, yeah. Thanks for the tips. Appreciate it. Thank you. After a much needed break for lunch, it's time for the Forex reports. Well, for, for the purposes of this report, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll keep it simple. And yeah. Weekly. Week maybe max. Yeah. We're going to go <laughs> dollar card, yeah. Yeah, I think dollar card. I think dollar card because it's just. I think it's just like what we've seen there coming off resistance. I'm quite in favour of doing a pound dollar. Um, long, yeah. Are you? Longer term trend, yeah. Once we get to that area, that would be an area that I think. The team kind of feels like half the team. Um, we've already really got Ben and um, Connor. Uh, Luke has practically done nothing. I'm kind of feeling out of my depth, I think. That's what it is. I feel like I'm um, holding the group back a bit. I don't really know what I'm, do I'm doing. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I'm, just, yeah, I'm trying to stay positive, but <laughs> it's just I feel like a bit like a spare part kind of thing. These aspiring traders have their work cut out. Have they considered both the fundamentals and technicals? Do you agree with their trade ideas? Okay, guys, you've literally got four minutes, so let's be as quick as you can. First of all, what is it? US dollar card. US dollar card. Okay. So you chose that? We pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, so you all just sat down and you all started doing your individual FX reports on US dollar card. Um, we, we were looking at technicals on some of them. I prefer the US, uh, Euro USD, but we had to sort of marry the two and get like good fundamentals and technicals together. Okay, go. Ahead. Right. So with this, we um, are proposing a long, a longer term um, position. Um, looks pretty bullish right now. So over the last, since September 2017, there's been a strong upward moving channel, um, which shows that it's strongly bullish at the moment. And it's just recently reached the bottom of the ascending channel uh, with a resistance uh, zone as well. And yesterday's daily candle showed very bullish momentum as well. Um, so those are the technicals we based it on. Um, our position would be uh, along from one point, as you can see on there, 1.32660. Um, who, the, who decided entries, exits and stops? That was a thing I yeah, did. Yeah, I did the, the, well, yeah. We actually saw the, the channel on most of our charts, but then in terms of drilling it down, we, we took over. And yeah, and then stop loss was helped by those guys, because we were trying to get a good balance. Where is the stop loss at? Um, it's just below resistance. Just below resistance. Below resistance. Below below resistance. Channel yeah, channel yeah, support yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I can see on there now. Um, we'll talk about yeah, there's a few week. factors also affecting the, the CAD, resulting in a weaker CAD. Are you concerned about any upcoming news? Uh, yes, there is going to be some unemployment figures that are due. Figures that are due tomorrow. 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 Consensus is positive. The, the consensus uh, is uh, going to increase from yeah. 5.6 to 5.7, so yeah. there's still a drive down in terms of uh, unemployment figures. Are you happy that it, these guys did everything that they could on this report, or was it just you two that did it? No, it was a joint effort. It was a joint effort again. Yes. Okay, cool. That's it, thanks. That's all okay. we need. Okay. If you can uh, write down on a piece of paper the strongest individuals from your stock and FX okay. um, reports and it's also combined. weakest. Yeah, so they're not combined, no. So <coughs> who was the strongest on the stock? Who was the weakest on the stock? Who was the strongest on the FX? Who was the weakest on the FX? It could be the same people. Brilliant, yeah, it could be the same people. I think we've learnt quite a lot from the task today. Now it's time to see what the strongest candidate from each team thought of their team members. We'll be getting their opinions to make a decision on the next individual to leave the process. Done nothing all day pretty much. Okay. Um, it was basically a four man team. There was, was that, sorry? Uh, no interaction, no like. So, I even gave him when we was doing stops, I gave him a stop to look at and he'd come back. Strongest and asked, or fine, weakest loop. Water. I was like, okay. So it was, three, it was three that we thought were the weakest, really, wasn't it? It came to stocks. Even if you didn't know about it, he still wasn't trying to weakest. help find out. Mark. So Mark's got a few. Looks like it's between. Why do we have to do one a day? I think both. Ooh, savage. Well, at the end of the day, none of them, because I'm not having someone that's contributing towards what we're doing. Doing that fall on you for it, and you're working yeah. hard. I hear the that. The choice is yours. You can choose one or you can choose both. Do both then. 
Is that team decision? Just so. so who's going to tell them the news of who's the out? Man, decision time. So obviously it's um, day two now, completed. Um, these were the three that was picked from you guys as the strongest three overall throughout the groups. Um, uh, from from what you're saying, and obviously we've got to lose another person again today. So there was obviously task with the same task as what the team was yesterday in regards to getting rid of an individual. Um, it was very hard, I think, for you guys today on doing this without much, you know, background information, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of you guys have never even looked at a stock or, you know, looked at an FX report or anything like that. So I think, um, I think everyone done well in what we saw overall. I think these three were, you know, had a, a very hard choice. I'll leave it over to these guys to um, tell you who it is. Yeah, so as Sam said, there was two of you guys who were um, had the most names and it was a hard decision, um, but the person we decided to send home. My name's Alexander Rose um, and my truth is that that isn't actually my name. Next time on The Real Forex Trader, Trading to Success, I'm going to show these guys what they can achieve if they put their mind to it. I don't want people leaving empty handed, so I'm going to show them how to make money out of thin air.